This is Frank Islam, Chairman and CEO of FY Investment Group and your host of Washington Current Review, where we interview leading voices from business and politics that impact you, the viewer. Today, our guest is Ajay Kutari. Ajay, nice to see you once again, and welcome to our show. Um, thank you very much, uh, Frank, uh, for inviting me. It's really very kind of you and nice of you. Thanks, sure. Yeah. So you're a, you're a rocket scientist and also an actor, so tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> well, uh, Frank, uh, yes, I guess I am. Uh, I am, you know, both of those things, and I, I just love both of them quite profusely, and so I, you know, try to do my best, persevere to do my best in both of them. Yes, I am. Uh, I have a, a, a PhD in aerospace engineering, and so I'm a rocket scientist, and I have uh, also acted in several television productions that are shot in Washington, D.C. area, hmm. Hollywood productions. Uh, Hollywood production? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Wow. So you remember the Screen actor skill and the uh, first one as an Indian American to join the Washington Baltimore branch of the SAC. So um, how did you do all these things? Where do you find the time to do all this? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Actually, um, yes, I, you know, I, I am uh, um, the first Indian American or a South Asian to join the Screen Actors Guild in Washington, Baltimore area. Washington, Baltimore area is all together. Uh, for SAG, it's called SAG, mm -hmm. and AFTRA. Uh, so, uh, w what I, I, did, I what I did was, I mean, obviously, I was interested in. So, I took some classes in acting, in on-camera acting. Okay. And then joined some casting agencies, and I'll tell you a little bit about <laughs> what they are, who they are, and th so joined the agencies, and then um, I got uh, a call one day. The story is, you know, that. Uh, uh, they were shooting uh, NBC show called Unsolved Mysteries many years ago, and that, to come and audition for that. And so it was a, sort of a minor role, and and I went there, and um, the director, actually the assistant director, usually comes to you know the episodic uh, thing. So the, he was there, and so he said, "Hey, would you like to read lines for this more?" Little bit more, little bit more prominent role. It was not really prominent, but little more prominent role. So I did. He liked it, and so what? What happened afterwards was that uh, um, then I, you know, acted as a manager of Marrakesh Restaurant, mm. which That's used the one to Moroccan be restaurant Moroccan restaurant on New York Avenue. Morocco, exactly. So I played the manager of that restaurant in that episode wow. of Unsolved Mysteries, and so it was. It was a lot of fun and. Um, but that allowed me to become a member of the Screen Actors Guild. So I've been a Screen Actors Guild member since 1999. There was, you know, no other Indian American when I started acting. I started acting in late 80s in this area, but there was no Indian American or South Asian doing this type of acting at that so time. So what you know? shows you acted in? Oh, well, okay. So, so you, I, I just mentioned about the Unsolved Mysteries and, um, in NBC. And I've acted in um, Law and Order, also the oh, show. Is that right? Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, and it was actually there was a time when there was a show called Homicide that was mm -hmm. being shot mm -hmm. in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, so that, and then there is another show called The Wire, which uh, was on HBO. Uh, and you know, right now, I have sort of on and off done some uh, work in Veep. With, uh, which is also being shot in Baltimore. It's with Julia Louis Dreyfus. And oh, wow. Yeah, and, uh, but just, you know, small roles. To what extent? But, uh, but uh, also, this uh, another one that is being shot right now in Baltimore, Kevin Spacey's uh, mm -hmm. House of Cards, mm -hmm. you know, Netflix thing. So, so you play very small roles? Small roles, right, yeah. All the, um, is it a visible role? It's a visible role, right. It's a visible role, so, but for so a short it, time. For a short time. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. So what has been your experience in the Hollywood production? Um, well, I, I, I must say that uh, um, those productions are quite uh, amazing, actually. And then they come here. You have to prepare the line? You have to, yes. On, yeah, for those shows that I mentioned, I had to prepare, you have to prepare the lines and, and um, you know, go and audition and like that. Um, but the, the shows themselves, you know, the, 
um, productions uh, are just absolutely huge, you know, and qu quite impressive. I'll give you an example. Um, I was shooting this thing uh, called National Treasure Two in um, near uh, near White House uh, in Borders bookstores, and I I walked in and. And um, um, there was a whole huge crane inside, inside the Borders bookstore. And what was the crane for? Crane was for, you know, for the cameraman to sit on and, you know, and then dolly down and up and all that kind of thing. So th they, they are huge production. They really take care of their uh, people who are acting and crew quite well. Is that what you want to do for well, the rest of uh, your life? No, no. Be being no, part of that. this, uh, <laughs> does it pay you well? Uh, well, it pays. Uh, pay is pay sort of depends pay on. Pay. I'm not doing it for pay. <laughs> <So> <laughs> You're doing it for. I, yeah, I, I like. You to, like it. You enjoy yeah, doing yeah, it. Yeah, I, yes, I absolutely enjoy doing it, and um, uh, and it's you know it's a completely different type of world, and um, and it's just you know interesting to to do that. Um, so I want, I'd like to shift the gears to talk about you being a rocket scientist. Obviously, the, act, the acting is a sort of a passion, sort of a commitment, sort of a part-time. Right. It doesn't pay you a bill, but you train as a rocket scientist. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, yeah I will. Um, but you know, let me also mention that uh, the way that uh, this thing is done, this acting thing is done in this area, is that you have to... Um, there are agencies like Central Casting and Carlin Davis, an agency in Northern Virginia, and, and in Baltimore also there are uh, um, several Pet Moran and and Kimball Discurm and all that. You have to register for them with them, and then they will call you when there is a chance for an audition. Mm. And when they do, uh, then you go for the audition and uh, you read the lines, it's called sides. So you have a lot of you competition the lines, doing that? There's a lot, there of, other a lot of competition, there's maybe 20, 40 people wow, for, one, are, for, one, for one role, mm -hmm. right, yeah. So then, then you know, there may be what is called a callback, that they'll call you okay. for something called a callback, you know, which means that the, then the director will come there at that time and then, you know, so the callback is for a selected number of people out of those 20, 40, okay. So you go back and then you do that, uh, but it is it is uh, you know quite a, quite a um, method of doing this. And acting for the camera is you know quite different for, from acting in theater, and all the acting has to come through your eyes and you know and all that kind of thing. So it's 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 uh, it's uh, it's more it's different. It's you know. Uh, easier in some ways and more difficult in some other ways. Um, but, you know, um, if anybody is interested in finding out more about uh, how to do this you know, from you. the in Indian American community or something like that, they can contact me at that uh, phone number uh, he, you know, being displayed here or Okay. or uh, the email well, address. Well, I want to talk a little bit about uh, your rocket science and, yeah. and is this the plane that you're designing that can go to India in two years? Uh, two, yeah, I, two I meant years. to say two hours. Two hours. Two years yeah. is a probably long time. That's, that's what that's it used right. to take back yes. in many, many centuries ago, but right. not anymore. So is that, the, is that sort of a model that you're talking about uh, here? Yeah. Now tell me a little bit about it. Isn't that wonderful to go to India in two hours? Y yes. Breakfast in the uh, United States and lunch in India. Can't yeah, beat right, that. Yeah. This is going to happen in our lifetime? Well, uh, I don't know if it will happen. Uh, it, it will happen in our lifetime. How many years it will take, I don't know. You know? That depends how uh, long we but, live. Uh, <laughs> that's right, yeah. Uh, but yes, this is the um, airplane that I've uh, designed. And uh, I started a company uh, called Astros Corporation uh, after I graduated uh, with uh, my, uh, my uh, PhD from Aeros uh, University of Maryland. Um, <clears throat> and then these, I've been working for about 20 years on this type of contracts for the Air Force and NASA. And one of the work is, uh, I mean, the major portion of the work is to design this particular type of an airplane. It's called a scramjet 
ramjet scramjet and it it's a uh, it's you know it's a very detailed design that we have done for this thing um, it requires for example calculations of ramjet and scramjet and navier stokes and rocket equations and you know all kinds of very detail uh, detail um, computations and we have to do like millions of calculations to come up with one design you know? and so uh, the design was done and then you know we moved into um, being able to fly from here to orbit using this and also from here so to So how India. high is going to fly it? Is, 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 if you talk about the, which orbit, is that a polar orbit or is that the? Uh, no, it's low earth orbit. Yeah, low earth orbit. Low earth so orbit, it's only right. 500, how many, low earth orbit is what? It's about 100, 100, 100 miles, 100 miles above miles, the earth. 200 yeah. miles. Above the earth. Above the earth, but it's outside so the atmosphere. The, so if you're saying about two hours, so that yes. means by the time it takes off, mm -hmm. and in about an hour and a half, it starts landing. Uh, that's right, yeah, it takes off, uh, it takes maybe 15 minutes to take off and 15 minutes to land and it'll get there from from here to India in one hour. That's, it, that's exactly it travels it at the speed of 6,000 to 8,000 miles an hour. My goodness. And what is the, <coughs> what is the, uh, what is the, uh, what's the speed for the space shuttles? 500? Uh, the space shuttle's speed is 17,000 miles an hour, 17,500 miles an hour. So you can get to India in about uh, what, uh, an hour? You can, yeah, you can go to India in one hour with this kind of thing. You can go to orbit in uh, you know uh, uh, and stay in orbit uh, etc those kinds of things you can do with this so let's uh, talk a little bit about space tourism <coughs> it's a big deal these days and tell me a little yes. bit about what's going on with the space tourism is this a real is this uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well you know okay so uh, space tourism is is a possibility but let's start with the problem that we have you know about the space tourism thing right now it costs 40, 50, 60 million dollars to put a person into orbit. Now, um, why is that? So, imagine if you had to, uh, you know, go from here to California and by plane, and then dump the plane and take another plane. If you had to go from here to New York, take your car, discard the car and take another car back. If that type of a thing was to happen, how much, how expensive would that be? That would be very expensive, right? So that is the basic problem with the space tourism, uh, that, that it just really takes a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, um, money to procure. So what is the solution? The solution is that if you were to use reusable space transportation, which means of whatever it is that you use, to take you up there, like this is re completely reusable. You can do reusable rockets. And there are some people like Elon Musk of SpaceX who are doing exactly that now. Uh, but if you were to do that, then it will make a big difference. So what happened was that uh, oh, maybe about six, seven, eight years ago, Air Force asked us to look into different options for access to space. You know? So we looked at uh, these eight options here you know, for access to space. Now, um, these. So, so I want to show the audience. Those are the. Right. So is it going I mean, to make I mean, it provide? Uh, okay, uh, is it going to be make it more cheaper and more routine? Uh, yes. So these are all reusable, and so it'll be possible to make them um, more routine and also cheaper in terms of access to space. Um, so, so we did all these designs of, you know, eight different options that Air Force asked us to do that. We also did the cost analysis of them, design and then, you know, uh, and um, weights, et cetera, and that cost analysis also. And we found that the common denominator that will make it really cheaper is complete reusability, uh, complete uh, robustness mm -hmm. in design, robustness, and quick go around. If you can do all those things, then it will be a lot cheaper. And right now, the price which I quoted to you, 40, 50 million dollars, can be reduced to maybe half a million or a quarter million dollars for Some, a person yeah. to go into orbit and stay in orbit for a few days and then come back. So the space tourism is of that type. You know? so, so I think that what this is a great really experience will be in zero gravity. In zero gravity and, you know, <laughs> and, and it'll be just, um, um, you can float around for a day or two and, 
and you can you know uh, ex experience and have different views of the earth and and like that so uh, <coughs> what we calculated was uh, these things here which is called direct operating cost and so the direct, direct operating cost were calculated for various different options and the option which has the lowest numbers here are the reusable space transportation number. So with that what we need to do is to now okay so we can have that kind of a um, number that kind of a cost. The other side of the story is how many people would actually you know for having a closed and a business sustaining you are a businessman you know uh, self-sustaining business case what can be done so what happened what used to happen before is that there are like uh, at this rate of 50 or 60 million dollars uh, usually that is about three to five percent of the wealth of the person who is wants to go so what you need for 40 million, 50 million dollar price tag is somebody with worth net worth of 10 billion dollars. How now, many such people are there? That's Briefly, exactly right. right. No? You can right. count on your finger. Yeah, right, you can count on your finger. So here are the you know 10 people who have done this so far over the last 10, 15 years. Right, you you know the names you know Tito and Shuttleworth and Ansari and Simoni and Simoni has done twice actually in Liberty. So these are the people who have done it so far. But that's like one a year at the most. You know. It is not a business. So what can break this cycle? What can break this cycle is, is this uh, reusable space transportation. You know? And so what we did was the other side of the story. The other side of the story is that if you were to, um, so a survey was done by us and somebody else to ask and ask people would you go, would you want to go to space, would you go to the orbit for whatever, and how this price, okay? that price, this price, yeah, how yeah. Would, you, would you, for this price, how many people would say yes, for this price, how many people would say yes. So basically it is called uh, a pool. So the number of pool, number of the people for a 50 million dollar price is 10 billion dollars uh, net worth, that number is extremely small, you mm -hmm. know, maybe 30, 40, you know something like that worldwide. Here is a chart for example of that. So as you can see here on one side is the uh, worldwide number, this is called a log log chart and on this side is the network. It is a straight line almost. So the number uh, goes up a lot when as the network goes down. But as the, as the network goes up then that number goes down a lot. So we are here and if we can push ourselves into this area then we can have a lot more people who will be you know interested in doing that how how can we do that by reducing this cost to half a million dollars quarter million dollars, by doing the reusable space transportation so if we combine these two things to, 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 together together and then if the price is like half a million then somebody worth 10 million dollars can think about doing this because it's five percent of their gross right so that number of such people goes up a lot and because of that there is a self-sustaining uh, situation that occurs that is possible and if that happens you then we did some calculations of how many uh, people would do this and uh, how, how much revenue can be uh, obtained for for these kind of businesses and it's 217 billion dollars over 20 years that's a lot, that's of, a money. lot of money right yeah so and for so it will pay for itself it it'll pay for itself it certainly will pay for itself in terms of doc and by the way it's not just simply uh, the commercial aspects who will develop it the government has a lot of interest in developing it also you know so it is possible to do all these things you know. so with all these things um, we can have this we can it in, and it is just not simply going into orbit uh, for space tourism but if you are in orbit, then you can actually, you can go to the go there, you can manufacture medicine at a much cheaper rate. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, so some medicines that do not require suspension that, you know, um, so that can be helped by zero G. Um, you can build a um, fuel depot there. You will actually go from here to there and then you will be empty, 
fill it up and go to Mars from there, go to the moon from there. All kinds of things go can be. Mars from there and you moon? Can go to Mars and it, it, there'll be way stations in orbit. And you can go to Mars from there, you can <laughs> go to the moon from there. There was a, um, a movie that was made. Uh, this, this is very interesting. It's a movie made, made called 2001 A Space Odyssey uh, in 1968. And in that movie, and I wanted to show a clip of that movie, and uh, you will see that the kind of foretelling that existed at that time. And Arthur C. Clarke is the person who yeah. uh, wrote that movie. He, he, you, know, you know, he used to live in Sri yeah. Lanka, right? Yeah, you know, right, so right. He died there. Yeah. It was absolutely amazing, and and uh, I want to show a little clip of that okay. movie here. Okay, so so uh. so I'm sure uh, uh, the audience will appreciate it. But thank you very much for coming to the show, and thank oh. you very much for sharing all these wonderful, wonderful things. We appreciate it very much. Oh, thank you very much, Frank. That is our show. Until next time, this is Frank Islam wishing you a great week, and thank you for watching. <laughs>